The Birdman and the Cyborg Guy. Hey guys, Pigwars here, and today we're talking about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And yes, I know I'm very late to the party, but there's only so much I can do, guys. So, this is the second Marvel show to air on Disney+. Plus. The first one was WandaVision, link to the review in the description. And now, it's time to talk about Marvel's second show, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. So, when I saw the trailers for this show, I wasn't hyped. It didn't look bad, but nothing too cool. A uh, buddy comedy action. Nothing too interesting. And well, I was wrong. The show delivers on all fronts, from action to character. It was incredibly entertaining and well thought out. To start, the show didn't just go straight into action. Instead, it showed us a simple shot, an iron and a man. Get it? Iron Man? Eh. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll see myself out. Anyway. The show shows us Sam Wilson after Endgame, not as a hero, but as a man. It lets us breathe before we get into the action. But then we get into the action, and it is awesome. Falcon flying around, beating up baddies, and chasing down Batroc the Leaper, last seen in Winter Soldier. It was great to see him again, and I'm glad Marvel is using its older villains now. Really hope they bring back some classics like Justin Hammer and Eric Saban. And yes, I know he's dead, but I want him back. Then, the show introduces us to its main villains, the Flag Smashers. Now, these guys are interesting. They show The show sets them up as believers of Thanos, people who want to snap back. However, once we see more of them, we realize they aren't so evil. They are just refugees who want a place to live. People who need a home and a community to support them. And we are also reintroduced to Bucky Barnes, aka the Winter Soldier, who is now going to therapy. It's a great addition to his character. We saw PTSD in Iron Man 3, but that was about it for the mental side of our heroes in the MCU. They are people, and they need help too. We also see in Wakanda, where Sebastian Stan really shows off his acting performances. He cries, and it's so heartfelt and deep, and you can just tell all the trauma Bucky has been through, and now he's finally three. 10 out of 10 scene right there. Highly recommend watching that if you haven't. The show lets us feel and connect with our heroes. It shows them in therapy, or just spending time with their family. In episode 5, a good chunk of the time in that episode is just them fixing a boat and hanging out, just chilling. Instead of fighting bad guys, they are just being people. And that's where the show, sign, show shines. When it's showing us our heroes as well, people. It shows people as people. It's really good. We are also introduced to another new character, John Walker, US agent, the new Captain America. He is a great character. In Captain America the First Avenger, we are told that Steve is not a perfect soldier, but a good man. Well, this show shows us that what the perfect soldier is. Someone who follows orders to a T, does anything and everything he is commanded to. He is what the government always wanted as Captain America. Also with him is Battlestar. Battlestar is John Walker's best friend, and he is what keeps John from going off the rails. He's a really good man who only wants to help, so when he's killed at the end of episode 4, it really hurts. He was truly a great side character, and I wish we got to see more of him, but from what we did get, he was really good. Then in episode 5, John goes crazy, a combination of ego, super soldier serum, grief, and makes more makes him lose it. He tries to kill our main heroes, even saying that he is Captain America, and he goes insane. He's only stopped with when finally his arm is broken, and he loses the title of Captain America, and he has to deal with all this pain. He is by far the best character in the show, at least in my opinion. He's well-rounded, well thought out, and later on in episode 6, his redemption arc is earned. It's not just, oh, I'm a good guy now, it's more like you feel and understand why he is becoming a good person, and he still has a lot more work to do to be a superhero. The show also brings two other characters from Captain America's Civil War back, Baron Zemo and Agent 13. Now let's get the bad one out of the way. Agent 13, aka the Power Broker, aka the worst twist villain Disney's ever done. Then again, there's been some bad Disney twist villains. They're just another twist villain, and it's really stupid. She also killed Batroc the Leaper, so no way I'm gonna like her. You don't kill Batroc. He's French, Batroc the Leaper, he's just the best. There's no way I'm gonna like her, but 
That's all I'm gonna say about it. But Zemo, on the other hand, he is great. We get to see more of the character. In Civil War, he was good, but he just seemed like an angry dude. Well, in fucking Winter Soldier, he gets more depth. He has friendships with people. He has charm and charisma. He has the purple mask! The purple mask! And we also see his smarts, and he manipulates and kills anyone who gets in the way. He is a great villain, and I'm glad he came back. Also, this. So, all in all, this show was really good. I plan to do future videos on this show, but I don't know when. I'd say 9 out of 10. It's one of the best things Marvel has done in years. I'd rank it probably right below Iron Man 3 in terms of how much I like. So that's Age of Ultron, Iron Man 3, then Falcon and Winter Soldier. This show was that good. Also, shout out to my friend Appreciating Star Wars. They are a friend of mine, and you should all subscribe to them. They make really fun and good content. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you like and subscribe. Have a nice day, and bye!